Jaws on the first day. We pull up the uh, slide. Yeah. I'm trying to make yeah, it as quick as possible. Trust me, I don't like what motivated me to be productive. As you can see, I lost my wife June 21st of last year. We were doing a triathlon. She is a top level athlete. She played in college. Ran until she was puke in the middle of the summer. The entire time she was taking medication from her freshman year in high school. Prescribed medications by the doctor for anxiety, whatever you want to call it. Depression, things of that nature. So I'm going to give you a lot of medical information. I don't have a doctor degree. The only thing I am is a CPR instructor. But if you can prove anything wrong that I tell you, I'll give you both of those jets. Next slide. So me and uh, Fred got together, decided to start a foundation, to start raising awareness. As you can see, I'm about 30 pounds heavier than you. Next slide. So here's some cause and risk factors that you'll find in almost any medical uh, book. Next slide. This is going to simplify it. <laughs> Anything you put in your body 
changes what it's supposed to do. And you can, I mean, anything that it's supposed to do, like, all right, any mind-altering drugs, usually the first thing to go is your body's ability to be able to control its temperature. It's uh, ecstasy. I'm sure everybody sees on the news people pop ecstasy, go to the club, start partying, and they start seizing because they overheat it. Next slide. Identifying the victim. These are more medical terms we'll find. Next slide, simplify. If they're on the ground, they don't look right, they're stroking or they're seizing, or they feel hot, they're overheated. It's pretty obvious to see when someone's gone past that. My wife was on the ground. She never saw it coming. Next slide. Emergency management. As you can see, simple things. Next slide, simplify. Control your emotions and think. Anytime you find yourself in an emergency situation, you're, you're not always going to be able to control your emotions. Trust me, I can't do it all the time. If someone's not breathing, you might want to start giving them CPR. It might help them out. If you're in a hot place, try finding somewhere cooler in the shade. Hard to see. Fan it with your shirt if you need to. It's not that hard to figure out how to cool someone down. If they're still conscious, let them sip water. Don't let them chug it. You need to cool them by any means necessary. Anything you have around them. I don't care if you're out here running on base and you see someone go down. All you have to do is carry them over and put them in the water until the EMT show up. If you take water you got around you. Anything you have that your means to try to cool someone down. Next slide. Now, if you do have things that can cool people off, but they are limited, the first place you want to go to is right here on the side of the neck. The most important thing is your brain. If you got all this superheated blood running up to your brain cooking it, you might want to try to get that cooled off before it gets there. The armpits is the next place you want to go to. You can take something else cold, shove it under the armpits. That's going to help cool people off. Next place is on the groin. Shrink them up if you have to. That's where you need to go. That's the next place you can control it. Now the best thing you can possibly do for someone is when someone overheats, to the point where they can't help themselves anymore, two things are going to happen. They're either going to start seizing or they're going to have a stroke. And I mean, it's the same type of stroke after the brain shuts off. Seizing is pretty prevalent. It's happened to me before I came into the day. Sometimes it would be a different trigger. What triggered mine was I was working in like 110 degree heat and then snapped my ankle. So the combination of those two put me into seizures. I popped back out of it. And then I went and pulled myself off as it was growing up all the way to the sessions. Now this next slide is what I want someone to prove me wrong. I thought of this 10 years ago to try to save my mom from cancer. I couldn't do it. I knew this would have saved my wife for two days. But I still thought it was an original idea. Then I started talking to doctors I keep meeting. This has been done since Vietnam. Basically, you find someone with the same blood type, family member preferable, and you hook up a circular transfusion. Basically, the sick person will get healed by the healthy person. When it comes to cancer, this has to work as treatment because the healthy person is going to think they have cancer, produce antibodies, and then it'll help out the victim. When it, come, when it came to my wife, she couldn't regulate her body chemistry for two days because it was so out of whack. So it worked like a human dialysis. I really don't want to get.